What are PIM core assets? Well, let's look at the documentation. PIM core assets are files that are managed with the PIM core system, which can, you can organize in folders. The most common assets are images. Other kinds of common assets are PDFs, MS Word documents, which people can download from the website. PIM core is able to render preview images for most files. When it comes to documents, uh, you need additional configuration on your server or well locally uh, you will need to have installed LibreOffice and ghost script however for images and videos you basically have it working by default okay let's have a look at them uh, in the administration here in the assets tab we have our images organized within certain folders when you go into a certain asset or you click on a certain asset it will be opened like uh, so here you have a couple of tools and options of what you can do if you have uh, thumbnails added to your site you can actually pick a thumbnail from here and download a particular uh, thumbnail i'm going to show you how to create thumbnails shortly also another cool option is that you can create a custom download. So without creating an actual thumbnail, you can select the width, uh, the height, and select the quality and the format of the image and download the image like so. You can also edit the image uh, directly within PIMCore. Of course, it's uh, quite limited to what you can actually uh, do within it. But let's say if you click on the, the pencil tool. Let's just make it a little bit larger. And I just type in Ivan at the bottom right corner. I can save the change. So you have to save it within this and click on save and publish. If we go on view and refresh it, now you can see that it says Ivan here. However, what you might notice is if I refresh the page, well, that was a bit unexpected. It usually doesn't uh, show immediately. Depends on if the image was previously cached. If you're having issues with uh, the changes within an image showing right away, one thing that you could do is uh, clear the thumbnails and refresh the site by clicking Control F5 so hard refreshing the site to also clear the cache uh, within your browser. If you don't like the change, uh, one thing that you can do is go to versions. And here you have all of the versions of the image. Here we can see that we have a version without it. Uh, click on uh, right click and click on publish. And if we go back here, we can see that the old image is actually showing now. Another cool thing that we have is uh, you can see the embedded metadata that comes with the image. If you were perhaps editing an image within Photoshop, you can see that it was edited here. Uh, sometimes people delete uh, metadata, so this could be potentially empty. Uh, we can also add custom metadata that's going to be directly connected with a certain asset. This is very useful when you're showing particular images and Google likes to know what this particular image is. And if, uh, let's say, a certain image can't load, you're going to show basically the, the title of the image. We can add custom metadata by simply adding a name here. Let's call it test. Uh, it can be multiple types. You can actually connect a certain object, uh, a document, another asset. You can think of this as the document properties uh, that I showed, but let's just leave it as an input. Here we can select uh, a language and click on the plus sign. Now we can see that we have our test. The language is EN. Uh, the reason for the language being is maybe this will be some kind of a title for the image before the image loads or the image fails loading. You can have the text in English and let's say German that you have in this demo. Let's leave it as English and just type in testing text within 
custom meta data. Uh, click on save and publish and now that's connected to the image. A way that we can test this is let's just quickly edit our test document that we have. Go to test, SEO and settings. Uh, let's go to our code. Uh, there we have, let's say the default controller. We're going to create a new action. Let's call it a test action. Here we're also going to return the asset that we need. The ID of the asset is uh, 68. To fetch the asset, we're going to do the following. So create a new variable called asset. Uh, let's call the asset model get by ID method. And we said 68. Now here in the return, we can add asset and asset. We don't necessarily need to uh, define the name of the template here. If we go within our code, and this is the default controller, remember, we can add a new uh, template. Just copy this, for example, create a new template called test.html.twig paste the code that we need. We need this because this extends uh, the default uh, layout that's used everywhere that has the navigation and etc. And here if we just dump the asset we should get the asset but first uh, as I said, we have our test page. This is it. And if we go down here to controller action and template, we should now have the option to choose uh, the test action. So let's see if we have it or maybe we need to refresh. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. So we will just refresh the test page. Go back to SEO and settings, controller action and template. And here now we will have our test action. There it is. Let's save and publish. And if we go and refresh the page, we'll see that we have our image object. Here we can see that we actually have uh, the metadata that we that we need and at the last at the bottom is actually the data that we're looking for to to show now let's first uh, show the actual image type in image and just set the source as the asset because the asset here is going to be the actual path to the image. So if we go and refresh, we'll see that our image has loaded on the front end. However, what if we wanted to get the metadata? So one thing that we could do is call asset dot get metadata. And the name of the data which you want to get. And in our case, it is test. We refresh the page, we can see that the metadata for the input that we added is now visible. You can do this for any data that is currently uh, visible here. Another thing that PIMCore did really, really good is thumbnails. So let's say that you don't want this image to be this, this large and especially not optimized not even for 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 mobile a great thing that pimcore provides are pimcore thumbnails which you can set up by going here to the settings 
then thumbnails, and let's say we want to create an image thumbnail since this is a JPEG. Uh, the creation of video thumbnails is basically the same. So let's go to image thumbnails and let's create a new thumbnail called th test thumbnail. Uh, here you have a bunch of options of what you can actually uh, do with an image that goes through the process of being created into a thumbnail. You can uh, change the quality of the image, uh, the resolution, colors, rasterize it, etc. But the main part here is actually the transformers that you can use on a particular image. For example, we're going to be using cover. And let's say we want our image to be the width of 300 and the height of 200. Here you can set the focal point. We want the focal point to be on the center. And let's say that we want it to be forced resized. Click on save. And now if we go back to the code, uh, we're not going to show the thumbnail like so, or should I say generate the thumbnail like so. We need to call a few methods to generate the needed thumbnail. We're going to call get thumbnail on the actual asset. Then we're going to put in the name of the thumbnail, which is test thumbnail. You can also pass additional parameters here if uh, need be. So let's call get HTML and use the pipe and raw. Pipe raw is used within Twig to render out HTML. So that's it basically. If we go back to the PIMCO demo and refresh it, it's going to take a little bit for the thumbnail to show up. If we refresh it again, it's going to be instantaneous. The first time the thumbnail is being created, it could take a while depending on the actual image and if for example I was on the site for the first time and it generated for me it's going to be a lot faster for for you when you go on the site you can also programmatically generate thumbnails for all of your assets before anyone triggered the creation of assets the creation of thumbnails is actually triggered when you call the get thumbnail method for a certain image and what if you let's say notice you didn't put in the correct width and length we can easily change it by just going let's say 500 by by 300 going back here refreshing the site and now you can see that the actual thumbnail is larger. I just control F5 the, the page because the dimensions did change, but the actual thumbnail didn't trigger. I noticed that by seeing that the image was a bit blurry. Another cool and really useful thing with uh, thumbnails is that you can add a media query. What does it mean? Well, those of you that are familiar with CSS know that you can actually create multiple thumbnails for multiple screen sizes so that you don't necessarily load an image that's 500 by 300 on a screen that, that doesn't even have that uh, resolution. So by adding a CSS media query, what you can do is basically this can be set as the default size, but then for let's say phones, that are 576 pixels in width. You can add uh, new thumbnails that will be generated for that particular size of phone, or should I say screen. The other available tabs are basically the same as for the documents. We have the properties, which are pretty similar, let's say to the metadata tab that we have available. We also have the versions, which I showed when we edited, uh, well, added my name at the bottom right corner of a car. You can also, same as with uh, documents, schedule when a certain asset will be posted. Maybe a use case 
would be if you have a page with a certain gallery or something uh, where you're showing maybe assets from a particular folder and you want the assets within that folder to be updated with new or well publish new assets within that folder at a certain time and then they will be available on the site you can schedule that here uh, we have the dependencies tab uh, same as with the documents where you can actually see which documents or other assets or objects are using this particular asset another thing that we have for assets is tags we have a few tags already available or should I say added with the demo you can add your custom tags by just clicking add let's say test click on this and click on save uh, you can later uh, filter out uh, assets by their tags uh, maybe you have a website where you're showing assets you can use literally the assets directly from PIMCore and then show them on the front end and filter out the assets by the ones that are added here within the administration here at the top we have the option to delete this particular asset we have the option to rename uh, these actions you can you also have when you right click on the asset here we have the upload new version uh, which is also an interesting thing if you click on this and upload a different image it will change the current existing image let's say I uploaded a different car instead of this one or the same but from a different angle Everywhere where this image was used, it would be changed to the mo new model because we uploaded a new version. Also, if you changed your mind, you can always go back here to versions and change it back. Here we have a button for downloading the current asset that we picked, uh, the target where we can show it in the tree where a certain asset is located if we're having a hard time to, to find it. This is completely the same and the share button are completely the same as for the document where you can send a deep link within the PIMCore administration to someone else. Copy the full path to clipboard. This is basically the full path to the asset on the front end and the ID of the asset. And here we have the button for clearing the thumbnails created for this particular asset. This is great, especially if let's say I edited this image or uploaded a new version. Uh, we can clear the old thumbnails, the new thumbnails for the updated image can be, can be created. Hope the video helped you. And if you want to learn more about PIMCore, you can check out my Udemy course called Learning PIMCore from Zero to Hero, where I will show you all of the steps from creating a project, buying and setting up a server, as well as deploying your project. Hope to see you there.